preoccupied with things on the gloomy side. Your troubles are mostly magnified. All your foolish fears will come to naught if you'll only keep happy thoughts. Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to our Wizard of Oz series on every version ever. This week, my friend Mark Brown is joining me, and we're talking about an obscure television movie from 1972, Journey Back to Oz. Mark will also be joining me next week to talk about another animated Oz film, though that one will be a lot more infamous than Journey Back to Oz. This movie kind of stands apart from a lot of other sequels to The Wizard of Oz, because even though it's animated, they really tried their hardest to tie this into the original MGM film, so much so that they cast Liza Minnelli, the daughter of Judy Garland herself, to play Dorothy. And even though this movie definitely leaves something to be desired, her voice is not one of them. That might actually be the best decision they made for this movie. Not that that was a very high bar to begin with. So, had you heard about this one before? Like, what was the reason for you choosing this one? I had heard about it before, and I just never was able to find a a copy of the film to watch. So, I'm glad to, you know, check that off my list of animated films that I always wanted to see, but I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Although, thankful might be a very particular word to use. (laughs) (laughs) Which we'll probably get more into later, but, um, Yeah. yeah. I had, I had, I had, yes, I had, I was familiar about the film before. What about you? No, I, I'm not even sure I'd heard of this. I mean, I knew that there were several Oz movies that were like, like basically revolved around Dorothy going back to Oz. Okay. Which, I mean, that, that I think that's one of the, my problems with a lot of these movies that they always want to be a sequel to the original, original air quotes, the MGM version, because like, I I think I talked about this with both Eli and Rachel when we recorded their episodes, nobody seems to be able to touch the original. Like they can't match how good it was. They just want to follow it up. And for me, at least, I think all of these quote unquote sequels fall flat because they're a sequel to something that they're not actually a sequel to. You know what I mean? Because I they're trying to be a sequel to a movie that they're not a sequel to. Like they have nothing to do with the production of the original movie and they just, they can't be their own thing. They try too hard to follow that one and they can't. It's like it would, they would do a better job if they adapted one of the other, like, you know, 15 books or whatever. <laughs> Or if you really want an Oz franchise, make your own Wizard of Oz. And I know it is very hard to touch the original, and you probably can't, but you need to establish your own world instead of trying to build a world that you don't own, I guess. I understand. I totally get that. Because like, the original book, it is very different from the movie. Yes. And if you made your own version and stuck closer to the book, it would set it apart from the other movie. Definitely. Even something as simple as, you know, different characters like the field mice or whatever and the, yeah. uh, the wooden, what's it called, clothes horse. Or, there's, there are other characters in the book, in the, the you know, the, that first one, that first book. Yeah. That aren't in the 1939 film. Yeah, even, even to the point of Glenda. Glenda is two different characters in the book. <clears throat> a completely easy way to set it apart from the original movie. But they, I, for whatever reason, they don't even want to try, I guess. Because <laughs> there have been, and like, I don't know how many, because I've only just really started researching in the past few weeks, but there are quite a few going back to Oz movies, like Return to Oz, Journey Back to Oz, The Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return. <laughs> um, uh, those aren't even all of them. There's other ones too that are either in have been made or were attempted to be made or probably will be made. It's like they they want to go back to Oz when they weren't there to begin with. I mean, I would say pretty much all of these quote unquote sequels 
are about Dorothy going back to us. Yes. And I think that's part of what hurts them is because they don't have the world built for themselves. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just going off the fact that, oh, everybody knows what the Wizard of Oz is. We don't need to make it again. But it's still a different interpretation of the story. Mm-hmm. You haven't set up your version of the world. Like one thing I liked about, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll probably be doing this later on in your series, but the Disney film Oz the Great and Powerful, I know that had you know a polarizing fan base and I was one of the fans of the film, but I liked it because it showed us the prequel to The mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz. I mean, we, we have the, movie, the Wicked musical in terms of a movie. This to me, For me, this was the first time I'd, I'd seen a prequel to the story that that mm-hmm. you know would come to know and love and i actually had a friend who watched this film and he hadn't seen the 1939 film so for me i thought this would be a that would be a very confusing film to understand if you were not familiar with the 1939 film but he ended up liking it <laughs> that's kind of interesting mm. i don't know that i would think to start somebody out with that one but yeah <laughs> i mean I don't think there's any barriers to entry in that. I, it is a prequel, but it's basically building their own version of the world of Oz. Exactly. Which is like exactly what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> you establish your own world instead of building off of one that you never built in the first place. Mm-hmm. You have the power to just start from not scratch, but I mean, start from their, your own roots. Yeah. But I guess today we're talking about Journey Back to Oz, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> uh, I didn't know what to expect with this one. I was hoping for something decent, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen worse movies, but <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've seen a lot better ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the positives I thought about this movie, like I was legitimately interested in like the first part of the film before the witch comes and takes over the Emerald City. From that point on to the end of the film was a train wreck to me. Yeah, it, you're, you're right. It just, it really went downhill. <laughs> like, it started out decent, and then it just kind of got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. That, the animation is really nice. I, uh, overall, I do like how most of the characters were animated. This is a studio called Filmation, which is, was, even as an animation fanatic as I deem myself, it's not a studio I was very familiar with. But I guess one of the founders and or one of the co-founders and or the co-directors of this film was actually a Disney animator at one point. So like you can clearly see, like the, the scene with the elephants, you can clearly see animation that was from the jungle. Book. Oh, really? And especially the stampede scene is literally straight from the Jungle Book or Robin Hood. Yeah, I did not notice that at all. Although, I, that that might have been about the point where I was kind of falling asleep. So Yeah, it, <laughs> that would make sense. It was around that annoying time. Like, oh my god, the sound of the elephants every time oh, was so annoying. I was... I That probably wasn't when I was falling asleep because I was... The, the sound of the elephants was driving me up the wall. It was the same sound on loop. Yes. It was ridiculous. It wasn't even a pleasant sound. <laughs> no. Like the, the shrill trumpet sound and of an elephant's tr- uh, tr- uh, trunk. But gosh, it was annoying. <laughs> and it wasn't even it wasn't even a trunk because if you watch the animation, the yeah. elephants were screaming. <laughs> they were not using their trunks to make that noise. <laughs> this is a very Annoying elephant armies, which created. <laughs> oh, my word. That was ridiculous. I mean, that was definitely the most annoying thing about this film. <laughs> yeah. But a cool thing about this film, there's so many big names in the voice cast, especially for the time. You have Liza Minnelli, you have Mickey Rooney, uh, Danny Thomas, Jackie Leonard, mm-hmm. Milton Berle. And did you notice that Aunt M was voiced by Margaret Hamilton? I did. I, th- I thought that was a very cool thing uh, to yeah. do. <laughs> you went from being the Wicked Witch to Aunt M. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what they do nowadays, right? Like if you remake, make a live action remake of Wizard of Oz, if it was a film of theirs, they would put the <laughs> Margaret Hamilton as like Aunt M or something. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what they do with like any, most of the superhero franchises. 
yeah. have the original characters come back and make cameos as side characters or can or just cameos or whatever. Yeah. So I thought that was very that was a very clever. I like that. Yeah. There were little things that I liked about the movie, but overall I wasn't impressed. No. I mean there are a lot of characters I like. I like the new pumpkin head character and the uh, the carousel horse who has a cool he has a cool side quest. He's looking for a job. <laughs> He's not looking for a heart or a brain or or the nerve. He just needs work. <laughs> I'm wondering if because as far as I can tell, this movie was based very, very, very loosely on the marvelous Land of Oz, which is one okay. of the few that I've actually read. Mm-hmm. And I think that the horse was actually the sawhorse character. Okay. In the book, I think that he was actually the sawhorse. I don't think he was a carousel horse. They just he, made him carousel afterwards. Yeah, probably because it looks better. I don't know, because the sawhorse is kind of just a bunch of woods <laughs> nailed yeah. together in this r- rough shape of a horse. That can't be colorful. <laughs> no, so I don't know if that's why they changed it or what. But Pumpkinhead was basically the same. The mm-hmm. only the only thing was, have you read The Marvelous Land of Oz? I've only read the, the first Wizard of Oz book. Okay, well, in The Marvelous Land of Oz, Dorothy basically is replacing a different character because there's, if I remember right how it went, in the book, there was a little boy named Tip who was the star of this book. He was like, I don't know if you want to say slave. He was not the son of the witch, Mombi, but she kind of owned him. But then I think toward the end of the book, you find out that Mombi had... I don't remember exactly how it went, but somehow she'd gotten a hold of a princess of Oz and turned the princess into a little boy to hide her. So then at the end of the book, she turns Tip back into a princess and he becomes Ozma, who is like one of the main characters in the rest of the series. Okay. I'm familiar somewhat with Ozma. Yeah. So... Basically, Dorothy just took over the role of Tip slash Ozma completely. <laughs> so I don't think I don't think Dorothy was in that book at all. Okay, Tip Tip was the character then. Yeah, I see. And the Elephant Army was not in the book. There was a different army. I don't remember exactly how that went. It's been a long time since I read the book. But <laughs> the understand. Green Elephants were something completely unique to this. Like I said, this was a very very loose adaptation. They probably just wanted to reuse that animation from the Jungle Book. <laughs> Let's make them elephants. Someone found a, a cool, annoying sound effect. Like, I got the, I got their voice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know what the choice of the elephants was about. In terms of the voice talents, I, I think overall I enjoy the voice performances of all the actors, except for Mickey Rooney. I just wasn't... Every time he spoke into that microphone, I just wasn't getting anything out of him in terms of their speaking. I didn't even realize Mickey Rooney was in it until the very end when it was in the credits. No, okay. But in terms of the singing, because this, the chorus this movie has songs, this has got to be overall some of the worst songs I've ever seen in an animated film. Jack E. Leonard as the singing as a signpost is, you can mark this down as... I just said it. Jackie Leonard singing to the signpost is the worst singing I've ever seen in an animated film. <laughs> Both the singing and the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and really, that character did not even need to be there. They probably put the character in there just to give themselves another celebrity name to put on the poster. Exactly. Because he was there for one scene, had one very mediocre song. Every song was mediocre in this. Oh, I, I would go further and say less than mediocre. <laughs> for ex- Except for two two of Liza Minnelli's songs I actually got into, and I thought both the songs were okay, and she sang them well. But everything else was trash. <laughs> I guess the reason I'm just calling it mediocre is because it was so completely unmemorable that I don't remember any of the songs, and I watched this yesterday. <laughs> hey. I, I I can't believe you. <laughs> if I had thought they were truly bad, I would remember how bad they were. But they just—they're gone from my memory completely. 
the animation of Dorothy herself, I wasn't too fond of, but I did like the animation of all the other characters, besides the humans, mm. Dorothy and her uncle and aunt. Yeah, the animation, it was very particular to the era. In yes, which it, was, it has that 70s look. Yeah. Like the non-Disney animated movie 70s look. <laughs> yeah, 60s, 70s, because it started production in the 60s. Like, if I That's remember right, it was del- the production was delayed quite a bit. No, I think you're right. Yeah. The animation sort of reminded me of that Phantom Tollbooth movie that we watched uh, like a year or two ago. And was it was it was it that long? Ago? Well, <laughs> it was probably end of last year. Oh, okay. Well, time flies. Yeah. But I mean, I would say that animation was way better. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just the style and the characters yeah, yeah. vaguely reminded me of that. No, because yeah, that same era. Yeah. But yeah, that Phantom Tollbooth was way better than this. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. I think I was expecting something similar to Phantom Tollbooth just based on the looks alone, and it really it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this company filmation they made, I think, it looks like four or five other and theatrical animated films after this, including the. I guess there was a Snow White film from 1990, and I, I've never seen any of those. These, but I'm thinking, do I want to see these? <laughs> <laughs> There's like a Treasure Island, I think, and. Uh, the Snow White film I know is kind of popular amongst some like '90s people, but I don't, mm-hmm. the name is escaping me at the moment. Did they ever do an Alice in Wonderland one? <laughs> nope. I think you're safe for for your one. <laughs> Another thing. What do they do with the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion? <laughs> the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion were probably the things that annoyed me the most about this movie. Like, if you're trying to make this as a sequel to the original, and they did want it to be a sequel to the original. That was, I think that was their main reason for casting Liza Minnelli, yeah. the daughter of the original actress, Judy Garland. I think that's why they did that, because this is supposed to be the sequel. And then they made The Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion completely unhelpful and chicken out and not want to face anything. Yeah, they're only in the film like five minutes each, probably. Yeah, they basically just throw Dorothy under the bus. Like, yes. goodbye, we're too scared. I know we went on that big journey last time to get our you know, courage and heart, but you're on your own this time. <laughs> yeah, that part annoyed me the most about this movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Tenny Thomas was the voice of the Tin Man, but if, I, if my research was correct, apparently like his voice recordings weren't all that great except for the song. So, like, Larry Storch, I think, actually redubbed his voice for the speaking role. Hmm. What did you think of The Witch? To be honest with you, I saw this movie, let's say, last week. I'm trying to think of The Witch, and I can't remember (laughs) her. Which, I I remember, okay, I know when you said her name was Mommy, that brought brought back a memory. But I can't, for the life of me, remember what she looked like. I think the only reason that I remember that her name is Mombi is because I've read the book and I remember yeah. the name Mombi. If I had not read the book, I don't think I would remember that her name was Mombi. Yeah. And she was just a very generic one note yeah. basic witch. And she was Ethel Merman, right? Uh, yeah. And I mean, I guess she did what she could with the part and she did a decent job, but with the script, she didn't have much to work with. And <laughs> She's just as forgettable as the rest of the movie. Mm. Yeah, I forgot her. (laughs) I don't remember what her driving force is in the book. Maybe it's the same as here, but basically she just wants to take over. (laughs) Just just because. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The most generic villain theme ever. She just wants to be the ruler. That's (sighs) it. (laughs) Except she thinks that having a herd of green elephants will somehow make this work for her. <laughs> Gosh. That was, I'm going to hear that elephant sound forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And I don't, I don't even remember. How, how did Dorothy get back home? I forget. <laughs> you know what's hilarious? When I was waiting for you to come in to the chat here, yeah. I was looking through my notes and I was like, wait a minute, I didn't write the end. How did she get back? And then I had to go watch the end of the movie. <laughs> How she got back because it was so, it was over in a second. The movie basically just abruptly ended. Glenda conjured a tornado to send her back. That's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I probably, yeah. That didn't stay in my mind at all. No, it's so forgettable, which is really disappointing. <laughs> yep, I'm glad. I'm not glad. I'm. <laughs> What's the worst? 
I'm glad that I saw it finally, so I don't have to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's definitely it's not my my least favorite Wizard of Oz film that I've seen, but it, it it's annoying and frustrating. Yeah. It very boring, very basic, yes. very like it's not even it wasn't really even fun in any part of it. Even the parts where it was like mildly amusing, it was yeah. only mildly amusing. Like I can't really recommend this to anyone because it was just so boring. The only reason I would recommend it is if people they're fans of like the golden age of Hollywood and they want to hear Milton Berle voice yeah. a little lie in five minutes, you know. <laughs> or if somebody is on what I'm doing and just wants to watch all the versions. That exactly. That's a, <laughs> excuse me. That's that's definitely another reason. If you're just a basic movie fan, uh, find something else. You don't. Nah, if you're getting, if you're hanging out with your friends on Saturday night and you're, everyone's trying to figure out a movie to watch, don't bring this one up. <laughs> Not unless your group of friends is one that likes to watch purposely bad movies and make fun of them. <laughs> True, uh, I guess that has its, its purpose. It is. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode of Every Version Ever. If you like what you've heard, don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you prefer. And of course, make sure to follow my co-hosts as well. Any relevant links will be in the description for easy access. And we'll see you soon for another brand new episode of the show. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Every Version Ever.